and welcome to Game Sack. We are finally talking about the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Mm -hmm. A really cool handheld system with a really short lifespan. Indeed. Yeah, too bad. But anyways, as per usual, why don't you take us through the system? Okay, here's a little bit about the system itself. The, the Neo, Neo Geo, Geo Pocket, Pocket Color! SNK released a Neo Geo Pocket handheld in Japan near the end of 1998. This was a black and white system with only 10 games that were ever released for it. That's because SNK released a fully backwards compatible Neo Geo Pocket Color in Japan in early 1999 and everywhere else later that same year. The portable launched at $70 and features a 2.6 inch screen that unfortunately is not backlit. It does have, however, a very nice micro switch D-pad. The system would last nearly 40 hours with two AA batteries and also had a lithium battery to power the calendar and the clock. It has a 16-bit main processor along with a Z80 to handle the sound. It has a screen resolution of 160 by 152 and it can put up to 146 colors on screen out of a total of 4096 to choose from. In addition to a standard link cable, the Neo Geo Pocket Color could also link up to the Sega Dreamcast and share data with compatible games. 83 games were released for the system and it sold just under 2 million units and it was discontinued in 2001 thanks to SNK being purchased by Aruze. Alright Joe, thanks. That was very informative and short, just like everybody likes it. Okay, and for this episode, in order to capture the gameplay, we had to resort to emulation. But, you know, it's a Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket Color, how else are you going to do it? Right. And, you know, whatever. And in the meantime, let's just get to looking at some games. Let's start off with Metal Slug First Mission. I was so happy when this game was released as it's one of my favorite running guns. As you'd expect, this game isn't as grand as the Neo Geo original, but it's still a great game that's really fun to play. The action is solid here, and the game will give you a good challenge. Being that there are only two buttons on this system, the developers had a hard time figuring out how to map jumping, shooting, and grenade tossing. Well, they did it, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. There's a dedicated jump button, and you toggle between your weapon and grenades by pressing the option button. It works, but it's an extra step and I found myself rarely using grenades because of this. Other than that, the game is great fun. The graphics are nicely detailed. There's some good overlapping parallax scrolling which you didn't often see in portable games back when this was new. The sound is great, and while the audio has fewer and weaker channels to work with, the feel of the original music is there. Second mission. Metal Slug's second mission was released a year later and it was mostly more of the same. This isn't a bad thing as again you're treated to a solid experience. The best part about this game is that they fixed the problem of tossing grenades. Now instead of toggling between your gun and grenades by pushing the option button, they made it so that it just tosses the grenades. This is much better than it was before. As with the previous game, everything looks and sounds great. They even added some voice to the game when you pick up weapons which is really cool. Pineapple. And just like the previous entry, when you defeat enemies, they often drop power-ups. But you have to be fast because these things disappear only after a few seconds. While both Metal Slug games are great, I definitely do prefer the second one here more. If you own the system, these are two games that you cannot be without. Heavy Machine Gun! Rocket Launcher! Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure might have been the first time I saw Sega themselves develop something else for another console. I mean, the Dreamcast was still a thing at the time. So of course I had to get it since I had a Neo Geo Pocket already anyway. Basically, this is kind of a stripped down version of Sonic 2. But thankfully, Tails doesn't follow you around in this one. If you've never played Sonic before, the gameplay is pretty simple. You just need to make it to the end of the stage and defeat the boss at the end of every second stage. You collect rings and as long as you have at least one, you can take a hit, but then you lose all of your rings. However, you can recollect a few of them if you're quick enough. Collect 50 rings and keep them and then you'll go to a bonus stage. These are taken straight from Sonic 2 as well. I don't like them. But if you do as the bonus stage commands by continuing to collect an increasing amount of rings, you'll get a Chaos Emerald or something. I really don't know because I don't like playing the bonus stages, so I just try to make sure I don't finish the stage with 50 or more rings. Overall, it's a decent rendition of a 2D Sonic game. The scrolling is kind of hesitant at times and the control is nowhere near as good as the real Genesis versions. It definitely takes some getting used to. 
The graphics are pretty damn nice, but I was kind of disappointed that there were no multi-layered scrolling backgrounds like there were in the Metal Slug games. And for that reason, it kind of looks more like a Game Gear game, though I do think this game is better than the Game Gear versions. The music is pretty good, and I really appreciated how it was different in each and every zone. I really like the boss music. Anyway, if you have a Neo Geo Pocket Color, I say go for it, especially if you like 2D Sonic. King of Fighters R1 was a black and white game for the Neo Geo Pocket. Of course, this one works on the color model as well. Basically, you can play a single match like normal fighting games or you can choose team mode. This lets you choose from three different characters. To win a match, you must defeat all of the other team's different characters in that stage. Everything controls really well and this one is lots of fun. But the sequel called King of Fighters R2 is in full color! This is based on King of Fighters 98 and I've gotta say it's a very solid game. As everyone knows, playing a fighting game with only two buttons must automatically suck, but damn, SNK really did a good job making this game not suck at all. You still have a light and heavy punch and kick and it's really easy to pull off moves. Tapping a button will do a light action while holding the button down will do a heavy action. The game plays great, feels very true to the arcade games and as you can see it has really nice character design and good looking backgrounds. You can't go wrong with either of these titles, but King of Fighters R2 is definitely the one to have. Dark Arms Beast Buster 1999 is kind of a horror-themed action RPG. It's actually a spin-off of one of SNK's earlier arcade games called Beast Busters. Anyway, your main gun has a spirit catcher and you're tasked with killing and capturing spirits of demons and monsters. The gameplay takes place with an overhead run and gun style. Once a monster dies, you obtain its soul. Because monsters have souls, they're people too. Anyway, you feed these souls to your gun to power it up. Sound weird? Well, that's probably because it is. You'll want to power up and evolve your gun as quickly as you can because initially it's extremely weak. It has its own gauge which needs to have some life on it before it can fire, and it refills fairly slow so you often need to be defensive while you wait. The game itself is pretty cool. You wander around collecting hints and keys and whatnot. There's even some puzzles you need to solve in order to advance. The game has day and night settings and different monsters will be present depending on when you visit. Some places are inaccessible during the day and vice versa. You'll eventually get some weapons that kick ass and these can kill monsters quickly and even recharge more quickly. But you need to be using your default gun for the killing shot if you want to collect the monster soul and feed it to your gun later. The graphics are all pretty good with a lot of variety in the places that you visit. Even the music is somewhat entertaining and it never got on my nerves. This is one of the best original games for the system and I highly recommend you give it a go if you can. Samurai Showdown appeared in black and white on the Neo Geo Pocket. This one is based on the first game and you can choose from 12 different characters. It plays quite well for a portable game if a touch slow. The graphics look really nice all things considered. Unfortunately it doesn't have the scaling of the original Neo Geo game but that's not really surprising since it doesn't even have the color of the original Neo Geo game. The music has that ancient Japanese feel to it that fits so well. Samurai Showdown 2 is also a great entry for the portable system. This game is based off of Samurai Showdown 64 on the short-lived Hyper Neo Geo 64 arcade system. It retains 99% of playable characters. What's really impressive is that you can choose between slash and bust mode and most of the moves for each character are present. It's really amazing what SNK was able to do with their system. I don't know what it is about handhelds, but they hold a certain charm. I love the music and backgrounds because they're trying their best to be like the original game and on some levels it works and captures the feel quite well. Samurai Showdown 2 isn't my favorite fighting game on the system, but it's very enjoyable. Rockman, Battle and Fighters. 
Rock Band Battle and Fighters is kind of interesting. Basically, it's kind of a Mega Man boss battle fighting game. You start by choosing who you want to play as. Then you get to choose which set of games you want to fight a few of the bosses from. Then off you go into battle. The bosses don't fight exactly like they did in their original games, but they do share similarities. Once you defeat a boss, you steal his weapon and you can use it in future battles if you have enough weapon power. I really didn't find any of these tremendously advantageous over the normal gun. Sometimes your enemy will run off the screen and that can be kind of annoying, especially if he starts attacking you from out there. There's also another mode of the game where it chooses the order of the bosses for you and you collect coins and even get helper items like your rush dog. The graphics are bright and colorful and the music's pretty good as well, though it doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the original NES versions. Overall the game is kind of fun, but it didn't keep my interest like a real Mega Man game would. Oh, and this game was released only in Japan. Here's The Last Blade, which is a portable version of the Neo Geo game. I've always liked the fighting games on the Neo Geo Pocket Color, even if they are kind of simple. Actually, I take that back. They only look simple, but the gameplay is actually very deep and involved. It's a lot more than one usually expects of a portable game back in this day and age. Anyway, this is a weapons-based fighter with a very Japanese flavor to it. You can choose from nine different characters. Since the Neo Geo Pocket Color only has two buttons, that's what you have to work with here. One swings your weapon and the other is a personal attack, like a kick. The Micro Switch D-Pad works extremely well for pulling off moves. Maybe that's what makes fighting games on this system so enjoyable. I'm glad that they kept the cool stage introductions from the Neo Geo version here. They definitely add to the overall presentation. The backgrounds usually look great, but the characters look extra simple as they're just in black and white with one single color. But that doesn't affect the gameplay at all. The music is also very simple, but still enjoyable. I definitely recommend this one. SNK vs. Capcom Match of the Millennium is the first crossover game that I ever played. If you haven't played it, then you're definitely missing out. It's a fighting game that features characters from both SNK and Capcom. This game is amazing. It's filled with so much awesomeness that you might feel like you've died and gone to heaven. So firstly, you have tons of fighters to choose from, from each franchise. You can choose whether you like the Capcom style where you build up a level meter and unleash super attacks or an SNK style where you build up a charge meter. You can fight battles as a single fighter or you can tag team. The control works really well thanks to the nice D-pad and I never had trouble pulling off moves that I'm going for. And to top it all off, this game has great music and really good graphics. Also included are two really fun mini-games. The first one is from the Metal Slug series. In this one you shoot down aliens with crosshairs. There's also a Ghouls and Ghosts game here. The object of this game is to grab bags of gold all while dodging Firebrand. Fighting games don't get much better than this on the portable systems, especially ones from the late 90s. This is easily my favorite game for the handheld and one of the only reasons why I turned the system on to this day. All right, Dave, you liking the Neo Geo Pocket Color so far? I'm liking it. I've always liked it. Of course I'm liking this, Joe. Cool, so what the hell are we doing here? Let's get back to more games. I bought Neo Turf Masters on a whim back in the day when it came out. I didn't expect a whole lot, but I was very pleasantly surprised. This is a great portable golf game. Ah, don't worry, I won't waste too much of your time talking about a dumb old sports game, but it's a really good one. Anyway, it has an overhead view and it's extremely easy to get into. You can choose from different golfers, each with their own attributes, but I always choose the young hero since I myself am a hero. Playing golf and saving lives, that's what I do. Anyway, the young hero has average stats all across the board, and I myself am also average. You also get to choose from three different courses. The graphics and the music are simple but great at the same time. I'd always play this one at work on my downtime and it really helped the end of the day or night come more quickly. Imagine my surprise years and years later when I discovered that this was based on a Neo Geo game of the same name. Oh yeah. Definitely get this one if you like video golf games.
There were also a couple of baseball games, the first of which is Baseball Stars Color. That's right, there's a black and white version of this game on the original Neo Geo Pocket. You pick from fictional teams and play in your choice of a dome or a stadium. Overall, pretty much everything about this is average at best. I feel that the fielding is really slow and trying to throw a ball to a base is like an exercise in frustration. It's certainly not horrible, but it could have been done so much better. I do like the crazy graphics when you get a home run though. There was also Dynamite Slugger by ADK, the same peeps behind Magician Lord for the Neo Geo. This one was only released in Japan. Here is countries battling each other for the literal World Series. Again, the game is pretty average. The batter and pitcher graphics are a bit better than baseball stars, but the fielding graphics are extremely simple. The music seems like it's old, royalty-free stuff, kind of like the stuff you'd hear in early arcade games. I guess you just can't get an amazing baseball game on the system, and that's too bad. Another fun sports game is Pocket Tennis Color. Of course, Joe lets me cover this one since he despises everything about tennis. His loss though, as it's a pretty damn good game. You start by picking your character, each with a different set of skills. Of course the one named David is completely bald, just like me. He also kind of sucks at playing tennis, also just like me. Anyway, you then choose your court and these range from a typical tennis court to places that have weeds growing all over them. The game plays pretty well and it's easy enough to figure out. What's kind of cool is that during a set it sometimes changes from day to night as the matches go on and on. I thought that this was a pretty cool little touch. I also like the lively music. The graphics are good but one thing that kind of bothers me is that the screen is constantly scrolling up and down. Sometimes my character almost goes off screen and that's not good, it's kind of distracting. But other than that this is a great game if you like tennis. There's even more fighters to choose from on the system like Fatal Fury First Contact. This one is a competent one-on-one -on -one fighter. Gone is the ability to switch planes like in normal Fatal Fury games, but I'm totally okay with that because I never really cared for that anyway. The fighting action is... wait, did Mai just blow fire out of her ass? Hmm, I guess that's one of her special moves. Anyway, the fighting action is pretty good, so if you see this one for what appears to be a good price, I say pick it up. SNK Gals Fighters is an all-female fighting game featuring SNK's best. It seems like a more modern 2D fighter with plenty of humor and flashy special moves. In fact, I'd describe its fast and floaty feel to that of a Darkstalkers game. And trust me, that's a good thing. The only downside is that it might be a bit too easy. But just turn up the difficulty if that's an issue for you. The control is great with moves that are fun and easy to pull off, which is extremely not the norm for SNK fighting games. You build a gauge at the... Did she just show me the corpse of someone she killed? Anyway, as I was saying, like most SNK fighters, you fill a gauge at the bottom of the screen which lets you do extra special attacks. You can also learn items as you play. If you choose to use these, they'll make your game even easier by lowering your opponent's life bar from the get-go and things like that. I really don't think that the game is hard enough for these to be necessary, but hey, maybe you do? Anyway, check it out, it's light, bouncy fun. This is Card Fighters Clash, SNK vs Capcom. It's a card battling game that lets you battle it out with a friend or the game's AI. There's two versions of this game, one for Capcom and the other for SNK. The differences between the two are simple. If you pick the Capcom version, your starting deck of cards will have more Capcom characters and vice versa for the SNK version. Each version does have some specific cards, so you'd have to buy both versions of the game if you want to have them all. So the goal of this game is to win lots of card battles with many different opponents. You have cards to attack your opponent's card, and they can gang up and whatnot. If you have any attacking cards left over after attacking the other cards, then your opponent is directly attacked and loses HP. This goes on and on until you or your opponent's HP reaches zero. You do have an overworld map that you can traverse and find other players to get into battle with. There's not a lot going on graphically, but the music is pretty enjoyable. It's a pretty simple game to play, and I honestly found it to be kind of boring. A lot of people like this game, but it's just not for me. Card 
Fighters 2. A sequel called Card Fighters 2 Expanded Edition came out only in Japan. Gameplay wise, it's pretty much more of the same. The overworld now has an isometric view, and there are some new cards, of course, which is the main draw for people who like this kind of game. There's really nothing in this one to change my opinion of the series. Biomotor Unitron is an RPG, believe it or not. There's no epic saga or anything in the beginning, but instead you're using battle robots from an old war to enter and win tournaments and whatnot. You start out by picking your characters and there's quite a few to choose from. Then you visit around town, which is done digital comic style, which is cool. But the absence of music during these scenes feels a little odd. Your goal is to become the ultimate Unitron master, but to do that, you need to build yourself up. You can choose to roam the world fighting random monsters to gain experience and money. These dungeons basically only exist for you to grind and find stuff and you'll be doing a lot of it. You can also buy new parts and stuff like that as well. Then you have your teammate develop new parts for your Unitron and this is all kind of weird. I've never really gotten into games where you need this to develop that and other similar things. It's just something that never really appealed to me. But anyway, you eventually get to fight in the arena and you rise in rank if you defeat multiple enemies in a row. Then it's back to dungeon crawling. And every time someone says Unitron, I of course immediately think Unicron from Transformers the movie. Anyway, this is a decent, if somewhat simple RPG. There's not a whole heck of a lot going on here, at least not for me, and I did get kind of bored fairly quickly. Faseli is a really interesting strategy game. First, you're greeted with an intro with a real song. Okay, okay, it doesn't sound that great, but it's still cool that it's there. Anyway, this is one of the harder to find rarities on the Neo Geo Pocket Color, but not too hard because you can currently get a cart-only US version for around $65, and I'd say it's worth it. Anyway, you are at war and you're in charge of a mech. What's interesting is, is that you're allotted a number of blocks each time you move. So you use one of these blocks to advance forward one space and then another to simply turn to the right. There's other blocks you use to fire and use items and things like that as well. Now this sounds extremely tedious, but trust me, it's not. The combat isn't really turn-based and everything seems to do their moves all at once after you press OK. I find that this really helps keep the pace up, but it can also mean that your planned moves may backfire when an enemy walks out of the way from where you wanted to attack him. Now suddenly he's attacking you, great move dumbass! But seriously, the combat is interesting and I found it really fun. Between chapters you can buy new parts for your mech and even add new moves like slipping left or right so you don't have to waste three blocks doing one move. Why I have to buy these upgrades from my own base is beyond me. Don't you want to win too? Anyway, if you like strategy RPGs be sure to check this one out and grab it if you can. There's even a version of Pac-Man. I've never been a huge fan of Pac-Man. I'd much, much rather play Miss Pac-Man. Anyways, it's a decent port. They give you the option for a fool or even a scrolling play field. Personally, I like seeing where all the ghosts are, so I chose fool. The sound quality isn't as good as the original arcade. <laughs> what else is there to say? It's Pac-Man. Or how about Bust a Move Pocket? The object of this game is to line up the arrow and shoot the colored ball to match other colored balls. Get at least three touching and they break away. Clear the screen and you win that round. This is pretty fun, but my wife likes it more than I do. But she prefers Bust a Move on other systems since this one doesn't have a backlight and is pretty simple looking by comparison. And here's Poyo Pop by Sega. This is a really cool puzzle game where you match colored jelly blobs to make them disappear, just like in every other Poyo Poyo game, or Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine as it's known in the US. What's weird is that there are voices but no music during the match. The voices sound nice and clear, but if you turn them off in the option screen then you get some music. I much prefer this mode. This is a great game. And then there's Magical Drop Pocket. This one takes a bit of getting used to. 
Basically, you need to grab the colored balls with one button and release them with the other. If you connect three or more when you release, all of the same colors will disappear. Actually, it's not just the color that matters, but the design on the ball as well. This is all going on while the ceiling is closing down very fast. It's a very fast-paced game and at first it's easy to lose. But once you get the hang of it, it becomes really fun and crazy intense. I definitely recommend this one. Finally, we have Puzzle Link by Yuki Yumekobo. This is an interesting one. Basically, you're creating links between same color jewels or objects or whatever they are. If you create a link between two groups of the same thing, they pop and the game keeps going. Pop the two C's and the stage is cleared. It's fun for a short while, I guess. There's also Puzzle Link 2. This is more of the same, but with card symbols instead. And of course, as the name implies, you can link up against another Neo Geo Pocket owner. Big Bang Pro Wrestling is kind of cool. You can choose from eight different wrestlers and each of them has their own unique entrance music. The graphics are detailed and animate nicely with cool cutaways here and there when something special happens. But I've never really been able to get the hang of controlling wrestling games so I got bored quickly. But hey, if this looks good to you, try it out. And here's Cool Borders Pocket, which never made it to the US. This is a snowboarding game centered around avoiding obstacles and doing tricks. The problem is, is that the isometric view doesn't allow you to see very far ahead and you'll end up getting game overs really fast. I can see why it didn't come out over here, it's just not really very interesting. Now let's take a quick look at Evolution Eternal Dungeons from Sega and ESP based on the Dreamcast game of a similar name. This is another dungeon crawler RPG. Basically it seems like you're on a quest to find valuable treasures and sell them to a museum. And of course that means what else, battling a lot of monsters. The town scenes are pretty cool and they're presented in a digital comic style which is easy to navigate and looks great. The dungeons themselves don't look bad but they're just dungeons so what can I say. You'll find lots of items to help you out. The battles are not randomly generated and you can avoid them if you're careful. But I found that these battles can get tedious just waiting to get a turn to do anything. The music is pretty nice and it does add to the atmosphere. This game never came to the US and it's pretty tough to find a UK version. There's even a port of cotton, Fantastic Night Dreams, on the system. This is a key to up and sorry if you hate that term, but it works. You're a witch on a broom shooting scary Halloweenish things with your fairy friend. All in all, it's a pretty good port of the original game, though the sound of throwing the bomb is absolutely aggravating. But the control is good enough to get things done despite the screen being extremely cropped compared to the original. Basically, you collect jewels to power up your weapon and also obtain special one-time use weapons. These can defeat the bosses fairly quick. You can get this game for the TurboGrafx CD and also the Japanese PlayStation, but it's pretty cool to see Cotton on here. And of course, it never came to the US on this system. All right, there's the Neo Geo Pocket Color for you. Dave, what'd you think of the system overall? Overall, I thought it was great, and I wish it never died. I uh, like the size of it. I mm -hmm. thought it was very comfortable. I like the Micro Switch joystick pad stick mm -hmm. thingy, Mabobber. I like the games. I just miss it already. Yeah. What about you? I like it a lot, too. I mean, the sound probably could have been a little bit better. Yeah. Um, kind of Sega Master System-y, maybe a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, but that's a certain charm that, you know. 
I agree. Like. And then uh, the stupid sub battery, which often oh, dies. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't have it or it's dead, it's, you need the power mm-hmm. lights blinking. Yeah, and that's very annoying. But other than those things, I, I think it was a, a really cool portable system. It was a lot more fun than you might think it was. Mm-hmm. And anyway, what do you guys think of the Neo Geo Pocket Color? Do you have any favorite games on it? Did we miss some? Let us know. And in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSec. Imagine Millennium is awesome to play. Dude, I love this game. Dude, I can't see. Yeah, give me some cable. I can't see. Did you just throw a fireball? I can't see anything. Stop it! You're gonna rip. You just ripped the cable out. Now this isn't gonna work. No, you know we gotta we gotta think of something else. This works. I can see. Can you? Yeah, I can see. But can you really smell? I won! I won! Yeah, you won. All right.